What's going on guys and welcome back to LOI TV in what is very, very strange times altogether. I don't even want to talk about the coronavirus in this video. This is all anyone's really hearing at the moment. You turn on the TV, it's there. You turn on the radio, it's there. So I wanted to be kind of a coronavirus free zone. But just before we jump into it, a lot. This is going to be a very, very challenging period for a lot of League of Ireland sides. So it was great to see the likes of James McLean, Enda Stevens, and Kevin Long coming together. I think there's a few others as well to put together a bit of money to uh, tie over a lot of the League of Ireland players and stuff like that. So it's really good to see them making that sort of gesture and not forgetting where they kind of came from. It's just a really cool thing to see. And uh, yeah, respect to them. I thought I'd just mention that before jumping into the video today. As it is Paddy's day kind of week at this stage um, I thought it'd be a good idea to ask ourselves in this video which player from each League of Ireland side um, will be most likely to get an Ireland cap in the future. I am going to exclude the likes of Jack Byrne and Graeme Burke from Shamrock Rovers who do already have Irish caps um, so yeah, we're going to be looking at each team and saying which player from each is going to be most likely to do that. Before we jump into the video, guys, if you do want to enjoy it, please make sure to drop a like on it down below. We do really appreciate if you hit that big red button and hit the notification bell beside it to never miss an upload. Now yeah, let's jump right into the video. We'll start off like always in alphabetical order. We will start with Bohemians. And there is a few candidates here. You do have the likes of Danny Mandrew and Danny Grant who were called up to Stephen Kenny's under 21 squad in recent times. So that's Stephen Kenny, of course, taking over the Ireland job soon. We don't know quite know when, but he will be taking over eventually. And that's to see where his head's at in regards to those two lads by giving them the call up. So maybe he will look to them in the future. They're both quite young still. Um, but there is one name that stands out for me and that's James Talbot. The goalkeeper unfortunately did suffer a bad injury at the start of this season. So he hasn't had a real run of games this season but he was fantastic last year and actually got called up to the senior Irish squad. Darren Randolph's not getting any younger and if you look at the backups the likes of Mark Travers and stuff I think there's going to be competition there and James Talbot is more than capable of getting a few caps under his belt, I've no doubt about it. So yeah, although Bowes do have a couple of candidates, I am going to go for James Talbot. Next up we have Cork City and now a couple of these teams it's quite tough to pick a player from. But with Cork there is one that stands out for me and that is Dara O'Connor. He's a young winger and um, he was previously with UCD and he has impressed down in Cork in what is tough times for the club. And I actually do think he's a very good player and uh, potentially if he kind of maybe, if Cork start to rejuvenate and get back up the league table or if he does get a move to um, a higher League of Ireland team or maybe to uh, maybe abroad or something like that, he could possibly um, get work his way into the Ireland side up. So you never know, but I do rate Darrell Connor. I think he's a very good winger. We could possibly see him in an Ireland jersey someday. Next up we have Derry City. Now for them, I have gone for, I'm going to kind of cheat here and go for one of their players they have on loan, Stephen Mallon, who they have on loan from uh, Sheffield United. He's looked like a fantastic player so far this season. His goal against Bohemians was a standout moment for me. Fantastic goal. And he's quite versatile as well down that left-hand side. And he's still young as well, of course. And if he can get impressed with um, Derry, maybe break into Sheffield United's team, that might be a bit unlikely if they're challenging in the top half of the Premier League. It's going to be tough to break into that team. But if he maybe gets a move to the Championship or stays in the League of Ireland and uh, continues to um, really impress everybody, who knows, we could see him um, breaking into Stephen Kenny's plans um, because he is a young player and he's quite versatile as well down that left hand side. Enda Stevens is around the 30 years old, James McLean's in, the third, in his 30s as well. So that left hand side there is going to be spaces available for players to break into the team and why not. Next up we have Dundalk and as I was talking about the left hand side of the pitch there, that leads me on to the next player I'm going to talk about, Dara Leahy. The young fullback who has been very impressive for Bowes for two seasons including uh, getting into the team of the year in his first season with the club. A little bit injury prone last year, had a couple of bad injuries but um, he's still impressed enough to get a move to the Champions Dundalk where he might not get in ahead of Dame Massey, it's been a little bit hard from this season so far, Dame Massey is such an experienced quality player and um, he's going to provide great competition there of course, um, so it's a good shooter even to have um, Dame Massey in front of him to tutor him into how to play in the side and maybe take over from uh, next season but he has been a mainstay in Ireland's under 21 side under Stephen Kenny and Stephen Kenny was actually when he was manager of Dundalk wanted to sign Daryl Leahy from Bohemians so he's a big big fan of the fullback and as I was saying before Ender Stevens is getting on a bit as well so who knows if Daryl does impress with Dundalk then who's to say whether he could get uh, into the senior setup. Next up we have Finn Harps. Now I won't lie to you, this one was quite difficult. There's not many players that are likely to get an Ireland call up here. But I have gone for Carlo Sullivan. I think he's only 19 or 20 years of age. He's a young winger. He scored on their opening game of the season and a 1-0 win. And yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky with Finn Harps to know, but he has looked bright. Um, he's a quick winger. 
He came from Limerick. I'm not too sure how close he'll ever get to wearing the to wearing the green jersey, but you never know. And if he gets, if he continues to improve this season with Finn Harps, keeps them up, um, and has a big part to play in that, and maybe gets a move away or something like that, you never know. So um, Carlos Sullivan is definitely one to keep an eye on this season. Next up, we have Shamrock Rovers. Now this one's quite tricky because they do have two Irish internationals in their squad, in Graham Burke and Jack Byrne. So I have to go for somebody else. And Shamrock Rovers do have a lot of young talent in their squad. They even have a second team full of young talent. Um, and there is a lot of players you could probably pick from here. The likes of Brandon Cavanagh and stuff like that, Liam Scales, and players, these young players uh, kind of spring to mind first. Um, Neil Frugia, um, Thomas Alua, there's a lot of young talent there. But the player, an interesting outside shout from, from Miles, want to do something different, is Aaron McEnough. Now, he hasn't actually declared his allegiance to Northern Ireland or Republic of Ireland, but he is a top class midfielder. He's still only 23, 24 years of age. It seems like he's been around for ages, but um, he's a top, he's a really classy midfielder um, that can play in the number 10 or further back in a defensive, more defensive role. And, uh, and I've heard Stephen Kenny is a fan of him as well. Um, and. I don't know, like if he had, he hasn't declared for Northern Ireland or Republic of Ireland, but I think he does lean more towards the Republic. Yeah, I think he, I think, I think Aaron McEnough could be an outside shout there. But yeah, as for Shamrock Rovers, they do have so many uh, young prospects that could well go on to pull on the green jersey. Next up, we have Shelburne, and then for them, I have gone for Jay's Cabia. He's a winger, forward type player. You can play anywhere across the front three, and he has scored some big goals for Chelsea this season. He scored in the 1-0 win over St. Pat's. I believe he's still a teenager. I think he's 19, maybe version on 20. But uh, he's looked very good in the first division last year, and for Shells this season, he's been a, he's been a consistent performer for them. So yeah, Jay's Cave, yeah, who knows how high his potential could be. Moving on next to Sligo Rovers. Now this is a player that I was really impressed by last season. He has suffered a really, really bad injury. I think he's out for five or six months. Um, John Matten, he's the centre half for Sligo, and he'd been rumoured with uh, moves to Scotland at some stage last season. And um, he'd suffered a really, really um, bad injury, which is so unfortunate to see. Yeah, he was he was top class for Sligo, and he's a real good centre half, really good defender, and it's one that he's only I think he's only 20 years old, so he's going to come back from this injury just fine, and he's going to thrive. Um, it is an annoying one at this stage of his career. He'd love to be out there impressing, but listen, um, he'll come back stronger, and it'll be a good learning curve for him um, to take on for his future career. And he is definitely a hot prospect. Um, for Sligo Rovers and for possibly Ireland as well. Next up we have the Saints, St. Patrick's Athletic. Um, and for them, I've gone for their midfielder, Jamie Lennon. He had been called up to the under-21 squad as well, which gives you an indication. I think that is a good guideline to go by um, because Stephen Kenny will look to integrate those players into the side. And he is kind of one of those, kind of a CDM type player. Reminds me a little bit of a Glenn Whelan in terms of kind of keeps things simple and ticking along well. He's tough on the tackle, but he's very underrated and goes under the radar. A lot of the work he does gets around the pitch well. And uh, he, he looks a good player for his pats and he, he's a good midfielder. Like he's... He's good at kind of just, as I said, simple things like just playing, like winning the ball back and playing to Chris Forrester, a, more, a very creative type player. So I think Jamie Lennon is, is a fantastic player in terms of what he brings to the team. I think Stephen Kenny does like to have a player like that in his team as well, kind of similar to kind of a Chris Shields type maybe. Um, he will have a lot of competition if he is to get in and around the Ireland setup with the likes of Jason Mullumby and a lot of other players that are going to be coming through, no doubt. So um, whether he pulls on the Irish jersey or not is probably unlikely right now, but who knows in a year or two where he could be and where Pats could be if they push up the league and start challenging again. Next up we have Waterford. Now for this one was quite tricky as well. I was thinking about Michael O'Connor up front. He's their captain and um, he's a young forward but he's probably not, not in anywhere close to being good enough I'd say in terms of the, all the young talent we have coming through up front. So um, I was looking at maybe Tyreek Wilson that left back as being the best shout here. Um, he's a very, very good player obviously with Man City for years. Um, some mad photos on his Instagram of him. I just looked at the one when he signed for Waterford. Uh, he left Man City and there's pictures of him in the youth team with Phil Foden, Jaden Sancho and then there's pictures of him training with De Bruyne and Aguero. Like it's crazy. So he definitely has top class pedigree. He's seen what those players are like day in, day out in training and stuff like that. So. Um, he can definitely bring a lot to water for this season. I feel impressed by him so far. He looks like a solid left back, and um, he's played for Ireland underage, I think, as well. So he's definitely one to keep an eye on this year. He's a good fullback, and he's only 20, 21 now. So who knows where he could be this time next year? Anyways, guys, there you have it. I hope you did enjoy the video. I thought it could be a bit of crack to see which players could possibly play for Ireland in the future. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If there's someone I missed out from from each of the teams as well, make sure to let me know in the comments below as well. I am going to try and get uploading a bit more regularly. Um, if you have any ideas for videos while we have this kind of break period, 
uh, let me know down in the comments below as well hope you're all doing okay guys make sure to stay safe out there keep cleaning your hands look after your family and friends and yeah if you haven't already it would mean a lot to us if you could subscribe and like the video as well thanks for watching guys catch us in a bit Thank you.